All right, today we're gonna learn how to paint this painting I call Architectural Abstraction. All right, the question of the day is, who is Carlo Cara? All right, let's run through the colors. Pearly red, Quinn red, burnt sienna, Quinn orange, permanent moon, copper, yellow ochre, cad yellow, primary yellow, Quinn blue, Mars black, titanium white, phthalo blue. All right, today we're gonna do a painting in a style I call architecture abstraction. this with white on these little overlaps you know cover that up but we gotta let it drive and see what happens in the next layer stripe a little splash here we cut back into the shape so I had a little more definition so when we add color later that section is gonna pop with a pure color almost it'll have a little bit of the orange but not much and yeah we'll see where we go from here if we keep it square we added kind of triangles triangles looks better but I'm kind of more into rectangles sometimes so we'll see <music> more when we add more copper we did this corner as well and a little bit of splash um, for now we gotta let this dry and then we'll add the white layer so we just need to let that chill probably do dark blue here to kind of pull that together and then start adding the darks and the lights and yeah we'll see as we build that complexity up where it goes from here <music> It's very close to this blue, so we'll see if we keep that blue and as that progresses. But I wanted to kind of that contrast between the lighter blue to the darker blue. 
Same with this orange. We'll probably have to do a lighter and a darker version. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think I want to do the copper highlights on this as well. So we'll see how that progresses. I'm looking to make it very complex. I usually do very simplified forms, but I think that's not as popular as a complex form. So I kind of want to see if I can, you know, keep pushing that forward. And, you know, the challenge is you lose kind of those big, broad strokes, which you kind of want to have. So I'll probably stick, you know, within these color schemes and then just kind of cut back into the shapes and make them more complex. So we'll see how that develops as we go along. Some of it is still drying, um, so we got to be careful and work around that. I'm going to add in kind of a light orange to kind of pull that together, and we'll see how that pulls together, and then probably add another layer after that, but we'll see where it goes from here. I think what we need now is a really dark color to make this stand out more so a darker color than this so we're gonna go really dark a really dark pure purple I think and kind of cut into this a little bit more and see where it goes from there back 
you know, add the white, uh, maybe a, a hot pink off of this. So we'll see how that develops. The earlier layer was kind of ugly at this, so maybe I won't do that. We'll see. I need to have a really opaque color, I think, versus this lighter color just kind of doesn't work a little bit. So we'll see what color I develop to kind of accent this and just kind of finalize it. So Carla Carler was a famous abstract painter and very influential for futurism. So the way he got started is he started as kind of a mural decorator and he started doing the famous French exhibition in 1900. And there he met a lot of influential artists of the time. And he decided to go back to Italy. And in 1911, he met with these three other futurists artists and they form the framework for the futurists supremacist no <laughs> declaration of futurism or something <laughs> i can't remember right off the top of my head but this doc oh the futurist manifesto that's what it was and this was famous for kind of putting the framework together for abstract art which futurism is kind of like cubism but with a movement so and it also has to do with a lot of philosophy of you know, moving away from realism of, related from photography into a new abstract movement. Um, and then later in 19, I want to say 17, he met up with Chirico, who was a famous um, surrealist, and they came up with the, uh, I can't think of the name. Anyway, they came up with the famous document <laughs> and he worked with Chirico for a while and he was a, one of the surrealists. So he kind of moved away from futurism towards kind of this isolated surrealist landscapes. And then later kind of a socialist realist style similar to the way Picasso developed. So it's interesting that he kind of developed very similar to Picasso with the, cube, the, you know, the futurism, which is a version of cubism more to say, and into surrealism. And then uh, from that, into kind of socialist realism. And he was also, you know, being a futurist, they kind of supported a very nationalistic agenda. So the lady was kind of associated with fascism, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, it's kind of the natural progression of that movement, so to say. In the sense, it was the modern man, the progression, and Nazism, as you know, was kind of the ideal man. And so that's a very parallel art form to the actual political movement, so it, it makes sense that they are kind of associated together. And it might be the reason why, after the war, he kind of turned away from, you know, futurism and surrealism, and probably obviously hurt his art career, I would say, because he probably wasn't as collected, I would say, because of this, you know, not, kind of na Nazism, fascism overhang. 
Um, fascism wasn't as bad in Italy. You know, they did put a lot of people in prison from socialists and communists and other um, opposite parties, but it wasn't the same as, you know, in Germany where they rounded up Jews and actively hunted them down. So in Italy, they really didn't take that approach. They almost, they almost hid the Jews, but it wasn't as crazy as under Hitler, right? But that's who Carlo Carr is. All right, we just finished the painting. Let's take a closer look. So I got these really nice highlights here. I added that pink kind of to cut back the white. I didn't want the white. I thought it was a little bit amateurish, just leaving pure white. It obviously is a great contrast color, but I think that pink plays in better with um, the orange and it has a little bit of the copper, so it pulls in some of the other colors as well. And we got a lot of nice, like, thin line to kind of make that really pop and stand out. I added some solid shapes here at the bottom and off to the side to kind of fill that in and make it better composed, I think, with the highlights. Um, yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty solid painting. Um, it has a lot of nice darks to light contrast, a lot of complexity. You know, I've been cutting back on the complexity, but I just noticed it just, um, those paintings, some of them feel unfinished. And I think this will be easier to sell with the complexity level. I've noticed other painters in this genre that paint geometric shapes use a lot of complexity in their paintings. So I think, you know, this is a more, probably more sellable work, um, but also more interesting as well with the complexity. So it's kind of interesting to get back into that. I was thinking of using the dia um, triangles, but then I was like, ah, I kind of like this square shape. Um, I've been falling more for the square shape. I know that triangles are more popular in my style, but I really like this kind of, you know, come together. It feels more symmetrical to me and just kind of more appealing, um, more neutral, a little more laid back. Obviously, it's a lot of high pop colors. As my wife says, she's like, there's a lot of drama in your work. <laughs> I'm like, I hope so. You're selling emotion, right, in artwork. But hopefully you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to see the full version, check my Patreon account. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next painting video. Thanks for watching, guys.